The Jack Benny Program, presented by America's largest selling cigarette, Lucky Strike. Lucky Strike, first again with tobacco men. Yes, Lucky Strike is the overwhelming choice of the independent tobacco experts, the auctioneers, buyers, and warehousemen. For a recent impartial survey, finds more of these experts smoke Lucky Strike regularly than the next two leading brands combined. To you as a smoker, that fact is extremely important because these experts look to a cigarette for enjoyment. Real deep down smoking enjoyment. Now, aren't you looking for the same thing? Then light up a Lucky and puff by puff, you'll see. L-S-M-F-T, L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco and fine tobacco means real smoking enjoyment for you. That's why you'll like Lucky Strike. The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to take you out to Jack Benny's home in Beverly Hills. At the moment, Rochester is busy in the kitchen while Jack is in the other room polishing the silver. Phew. Oh, boy, what a job. Oh, well, there are only four pieces left. Three dimes and a quarter. <laughs> Gosh, look how they shine. They were green when I took them out of my pocket. <laughs> I'll never wait that long again. <laughs> Quiet, Polly. And remember, Polly, now Daddy's giving a very important dinner party tonight. So remember what I taught you. How do you do, Mr. Coleman? How do you do, Mr. Coleman? That's right. How do you do, Mrs. Coleman? Hiya, toots. <laughs> Polly, I wish you'd pay more attention. Oh, boss! Yes, Rochester? What time are Mr. and Mrs. Coleman coming over for dinner? Oh, they'll be here about 7.30. Good! That'll give me time to fix some hors d'oeuvres. Oh, yes. What are we going to have, Rochester? Cheese and crackers, anchovies and sardines. No, uh, no hard-boiled egg? No, Polly didn't come through this week. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, oh, she didn't, eh? Rochester, hand me that Halloween mask. Here you are. Polly. Boom! Oh, my goodness, look, Rochester, the egg bro. You sure scared her, boss. It's a double yogurt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, two yolks. My son, my son. <laughs> It'll be all right, Polly. You're young yet. You'll have more. <laughs> Rochester, you fix the hors d'oeuvres. I'll go out in the yard and pick some flowers for the table. You sigh, the song begins. Just speak, I'll play my violin. It's magic. <laughs> the stars desert the skies. It happens even in Van Nuys. It's magic. <laughs> Gee, look at that backyard. Everything's growing so nicely. I wish I were a little luckier, though. Tomatoes go to 60 cents a pound, and I'm stuck with an acre of beans. <laughs> oh, well. Last spring, I made money on my pigs. <laughs> See, what kind of flowers should I get for the table? I think I'll take some of these bluebells. They match my eyes. <laughs> Now, Ronnie, Ronnie's my guest. I'll, I'll pick gardenias. They kind of match his hair. <laughs> I'll, I'll take, I think I'll take some of these roses, too. There. That ought to be enough. You sign the song begins, and then I play my violin. It's lousy. <laughs> la, 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 la. Oh, Rochester. 
Rochester, get me a vase for these flowers. Yes, sir. And say, boss, while you're out, Polly laid another egg. Another egg? Yeah, she said it was a repeat for the West Coast. <laughs> what? She was holding it for release at this more convenient time. <laughs> Rochester, stop being so silly and start setting the table. Okay. Oh, boss. What? Are we going to use napkins or shall I put on a long tablecloth? <laughs> uh, we'll use napkins tonight. What about those on the buffet? The man brought those this afternoon. Wait a minute. These are funny-looking napkins. That's what I thought, so I asked the man to leave his phone number. Here it is. Good. I'll call him up. Hmm. Never seen napkins like these before. Hello, Naps Diaper Service. <laughs> Say, this is Jack Benny. Did you leave some napkins for me? Sorry, wrong number. <laughs> well, Rochester, do the best you can with them, will you? Come in. Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. I came over since I could. Oh, did you stop by the market and get those things I asked you? Yeah, but tomatoes were 60 cents a pound, so I bought beans. Beans? <laughs> now, I got a backyard full of them. I supply the market. I could have bought those beans for myself and cut out the middleman. <laughs> Heavens to Boston. <laughs> All right, so I made a mistake. Put me in irons. Mary, it isn't that. But... Oh, hello, Polly. Polly want a cracker? Polly want a rye crisp. <laughs> A rye, Chris. She's on a diet. Oh. Mary, would you like to? <laughs> Mary, what are you laughing at? Well, Polly being on a diet reminded me of something Mama wrote me in her letter. Oh, you got a letter from your mother? Uh-huh. Would you like to hear? Yes. What does Plainfield's answer to Halloween have to say? <laughs> <laughs> well, just a second. I'll read it to you. Okay. <clears throat> My darling son, Mary. Son? <laughs> Mama wanted a boy. Oh. <laughs> Uh, Mary, dear, we're all feeling well and hope you are the same. First of all, I want to tell you that your cousin Louie went on a diet and lost a lot of weight. It's a very strict diet. For 30 days, they wouldn't let him have anything but bread and water. <laughs> your mother will say anything for a laugh. You know. And Mary, it was awfully sweet of you to send your sister, Babe, that French bathing suit from Paris. However, Babe tried the bathing suit on yesterday and something's wrong. Either the manufacturer left something off the suit, or nature left something off page. <laughs> I knew she couldn't do it. <laughs> I'm inclined to think it's her fault, and she hasn't much of a figure. Babe is so bow-legged, she can wear two different stockings, and you never notice it. <laughs> You know, Babe has such peculiar legs. When she walks down the street, she looks like she's kicking herself for betting on UCLA. You know? <laughs> Jack, there's more. Oh. Mary, you remember your Uncle Oliver. Well, Oliver got himself a job in the local bakery as a pretzel bender. Oh. He's pretty good, too. You ought to see Oliver twist. <laughs> hey, Mary. Hey, Mary, your mother's pretty good. Uh, That's a swell gag. Uh, please read that joke to Jack as he's jerk enough to like it. <laughs> well, maybe I am. I don't know. That's all the news. So best regards and let us hear from you soon. Your loving mother, Charlie. Charlie? Her mother wanted a boy, too. Uh, <laughs> well, Mary, they can say what they want to about your mother, and most people do. <laughs> Now, Mary, would you like to help me set the table? I want it to look nice when the, when the Coleman's get here. Sure, Jack, but you know, it's still pretty warm. Why don't you serve dinner out on the patio? Say, that's a good idea. Oh, Rochester, we're going to have dinner out on the patio. Patio lady. <laughs> uh, Jack. Jack, what are you staring at the wall for? Mary. Mary, that echo again. You must have heard it. Jack, if you don't stop imagining things, you'll go crazy. I'm not imagining things. I heard it. I know I did. Well, try to get your mind off of it. Okay, I'll try. I got the table all set, Mr. Benny, but I'm having a little trouble with the napkin. With the napkin? Yeah, I keep folding them into squares, and they keep folding themselves back into triangles. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Well, don't worry about them, and you better check on the dinner. Okay. Oh, say, by the way, Mr. Wilson came in a while ago. He wants to see you. He's in the library. Oh, Don Wilson? Oh. Oh, hello, Don. Well, hello, Jack. The sportsman couldn't come over, so they asked me to talk to you about the commercial for the program. Oh. Meanwhile, I've been looking through your scrapbook all about your trip to Europe. Oh, yes. It's interesting, isn't it, Don? It certainly is. Gosh, what beautiful picture. Yeah. Don, Don, look at this one here, taken in Switzerland. Aren't the mountains beautiful with the, with the snow-capped peaks and waterfalls? Yes. What do people eat there? Oh, cheese and hot chocolate and a lot of dairy things. And Don... Don, look at this picture taken in Glasgow, Scotland. The highlands of Scotland are so picturesque and charming. It's really inspiring. What do people eat there? In Scotland? <laughs> oh, meat and potatoes, you know, the same as we do. Oh, look here, Don. Here's a picture taken in Amsterdam, Holland. Ah, oh, what a country, Holland, with its canals and dikes and windmills. You know? What do people eat there? <laughs> Well, I don't know. Fish, vegetables, a lot of things. Say, uh, Jack, what's this picture down here? Don, I'm glad you noticed that. That was taken during the war when I was in the South Pacific. That's a little island surrounded by coral reefs with a few palm trees waving in the breeze. and The water is crystal clear and the sand is as white as ivory. What do people eat there? Each other. They're cannibals. <laughs> I can't understand you, Don. I'm showing you such beautiful pictures. All you can think of is food. Look at this one here, the one with the donkey that was taken in Ireland. Oh, boy, Ireland. I've always wanted to go there. It must be beautiful country. Oh, it is, Don, it is. You ought to see Ireland, the River Shannon, the Lakes of Killarney, Limerick, Ballygar, County Sligo. Ah, Ireland. With its magnificent lakes, green fields, winding roads, and simple little cottages... And the people are so gay and happy, they greet you with a smile. And they're always singing. Oh, the days of the carry dancing. Oh, the ring of the pipers, too. Oh, for one of those good old luckies. How we like to meet every Boone. You can have your carry dancing. I'll stay home with a lucky strike. Made of light and fine tobacco. That's the small. Don, without a doubt, Ireland is one of the most beautiful countries in the world. What do people eat there? Now cut that out! <laughs> Look, Don, I haven't got time to talk about it now. You know, Mr. and Mrs. Ronald Coleman are coming over for dinner. Gee, look what time it is. They're probably getting dressed right now. <laughs> Oh, 
Benita. Yes, Ronnie? Benita. Yes, Ronnie? Benita. Yes, Ronnie? Must we go? <laughs> I'm afraid we must. It's too late now to get out of it. Well, I certainly wish we had to. Say, I've got it. Call Jack up and tell him I broke my leg. Oh, darling, you can't tell him you broke your leg. You told him that the last time, and he found out you didn't. Well, this time I will break it. <laughs> oh, darling, that's not necessary. After all, he's not going to ask you to dance with him. Well, can't you call him up and say I have a cold? And my doctor doesn't want me to be among crowds? No, that wouldn't work either. Jack told me this was to be an intimate dinner, and there won't be many people. Well, not at first. But the place will be jammed when the Greyhound bus stops for sandwiches. <laughs> isn't really so bad normally, but remember the night the sheriff was taking a busload of convicts to San Quentin? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, I'll never forget it. You know, it's bad enough going to Benny's house, but the people he surrounds himself with, that Phil Harris fellow, what an atrocious character. <laughs> Mr. Harris isn't so bad. He's rather attractive, too. He's got nice hair. Yeah, so is Lassie, and she doesn't drink. <laughs> Even if she did, she couldn't lap it up as fast as he can. Oh, Ronnie. <laughs> yes, and of all Benny's cast, the most ridiculous is that Dennis Day. I know, but at least Dennis has an excuse. Oh, what's that? He's nuts. <laughs> yeah, he certainly is. And that Don Wilson fellow, you know, I can't understand him at all. What do you mean? Well, once I was telling her about Lost Horizon. I gave him the most beautiful description of Shangri-La, and when I finished, he said, what do people eat there? <laughs> Up. At least Mary Livingston will be there, and she's very nice. Oh, yes, Mary's lovely. But how Benny could take that girl out of the May Company and drag her down to this <laughs> island. <laughs> well, well, if we're going to go, let's finish dressing. The sooner we get there, the sooner we can leave. I wonder what Jack's serving for dinner. Oh, probably the same thing as always. Baked beans under glass. <laughs> I hope he's more careful with the linen tonight. Last time we had dinner there, I wiped my lips with a napkin and got stuck with a safety pin. <laughs> oh, well, we, we've stalled all we can. Let's get ready. Very well. Ronnie. Yes, darling? Last one dressed is a rotten egg. <laughs> Well, Mary, the table's all set. Looks nice, doesn't it? Especially the decorations. Oh, Jack, you always overdo everything. The last time I had dinner here, you had the table covered with flowers, ferns, leaves, and everything. So what? So what? Trying to find the mashed potatoes was like looking for Chloe. <laughs> <laughs> looking for Chloe, looking for Chloe. I like the table as it is. Now, let's see. I'll put Benita's chair next to me, Ronnie's chair next to you, the high chair next to Ronnie, and... High chair? In case he brings his Oscar. Is there... <laughs> now let's. Uh... Oh, boss! Mr. Harris called a while ago and said you promised to lend him your tuxedo tonight. So I laid it out on the couch. Oh, yes, his didn't come back from the cleaners. Jack, where would Phil be going that he has to wear a tuxedo? Well, his band has been engaged to play at the Hollywood Bowl. But the Hollywood Bowl is closing for the season. I know. They want to make sure of it. <laughs> oh, I guess. I just thought of something. Rochester! Yes, Mr. Bailey? Now, Rochester, I want this to be the classiest dinner that I've ever given. So get the candlesticks off the mantelpiece. I think it would give it just the right touch of continental flavor to have dinner by candlelight. Uh, uh, wait a minute, Jack. I I'm not dressed for such an occasion. You're going to eat by candlelight. Why didn't you give me notice? The electric country, country didn't give us none. 
Yeah. <laughs> it happened this morning. I just stepped out of a hot bath when the man came. He not only turned off the heater, he blew cold air on me. <laughs> Here are the candles, boss. Uh, put them in the center of the table. I still think it'll be too dark. Well, okay. If you want electric lights, I'll go out to the switch box and connect the wires myself. Come on. Switch box is out in the service porch. There it is over there. Boss, here's a pair of pliers, a screwdriver, and a roll of tape. Thanks. This won't take long at all. Mary, hand me my rubber gloves. Yes, Doctor. Don't be funny. <laughs> Jack, what? maybe you shouldn't fool around with electricity. I know what I'm doing. Here, hold this flashlight. Okay. Now, let's see. And I'll take this wire and connect it over there. Did the lights go on, Rochester? Uh-uh. Oh. And I'll take this wire and put it over like that. Did that do it, Mary? Uh-uh. Oh. And I better take these two wires and hook them onto the bottom two wires. Like this. Did that fix it, boss? Boss! Boss! <laughs> boss, speak to me! <laughs> Gee, I couldn't let go. <laughs> Mary, when I touched those wires, did that do anything? Yeah, one of your eyebrows has a Tony. <laughs> I'm sorry. Hello, Libby. The front doorbell didn't ring, so I walked right in. Hello, Rochester. Uh, Phil, what are you so sad about? What am I so sad about? Yeah, what's the matter with you? Well, I... Jackson! Jackson, it's you! Well, of course it's me. Boy, am I glad to see you. Then you can lend me your tuxedo. Of course I can. I had Rochester laid out on the couch. Didn't you notice it? Sure, I saw the tuxedo, but when I opened the door and saw all those flowers and the candles burning, I wouldn't touch it for a million dollars. <laughs> what? And Jackson, don't ever cross the sleeves like that again. <laughs> Oh, for heaven's sake, Phil, the Coleman's are coming over and the flowers are for decorations. I'm using the candles because the lights are out. Uh, say, Phil, how come we didn't see you last week? Where were you? Oh, Alice's mother came to town and I had to show her around. Boy, we really had a time. Henry's, Francois's, Dominic's. I never heard of those restaurants. They ain't restaurants, them as pool rooms. <laughs> <laughs> pool rooms? Phil, you took Alice's mother to a pool room? She loves the game. Phil, you don't think she talked Alice into marrying me just because I'm pretty? <laughs> this is ridiculous. Oh, uh, wait a minute, Phil. Are you trying to say that Alice's mother wanted you for a son-in-law just so you can play pool with you? Of course, she was concerned I couldn't marry Alice fast enough. What? All during the ceremony, she was standing in the back pew chalking up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, stop. Chalk enough. Even the preacher got confused. The preacher? Yeah, he says, do you promise to love, honor, and keep one foot on the floor? <laughs> oh, quiet. Now, look, Phil, believe me, you're a very charming fellow. I just love to stand here and listen to you make things up. But I'm having the Coleman's over for dinner, and I haven't time. Okay, okay, Jackson, I can take a hit. You'll find a tuxedo on the couch. Thanks. Here's the three bucks. So long, kid. <laughs> Aren't you going to fix the light? Oh, I'm not going to bother with her now. We'll just have to leave the candles. Holy smoke, look how late it is. I wonder what's keeping the Coleman's. Benita, is my tie on straight? It looks very nice, dear. Thank you. Oh, Ronnie, I happened to look out of the window and I noticed Jack has candles on the table. Candles on the table? Well, that's Benny for you. Candle light and seven up. <laughs> oh, Benita, I'd give anything if we didn't have to go. Anything. Oh, darling, what's the difference? It's only one night. I know, but he's such a bore. Talks about himself all the time. Will you ever forget that night we ran into him in London? But Ronnie Jack was only trying to make conversation. Conversation? Benita... I didn't mind when he told me he broke all existing records at the Palladium. And I didn't mind when he told me that the king and the queen couldn't get tickets. 
But when he told me they were going to move his dressing room to number 10 Downing Street, I could have spit in his eye. Well, darling, you can't blame him for being enthusiastic. Well, perhaps not, but... Benita, his method of advertising his engagement at the Palladium was disgraceful. Well, it was rather flamboyant. Flamboyant? Imagine him hiring a skywriter to fly over the House of Parliament, writing, laugh till you crack a jolly jack. <laughs> <laughs> I never could understand that P.S. More for your car. <laughs> no, neither could I. I tell you, darling, if I have to listen to that stuff again tonight, I shall... Oh, I'll get it. Yes? I beg your pardon, is this Jack Benny's house? Well, Jack Benny lives next door. Next door? But that's a parking lot. Only the front lawn. <laughs> well, I'm sorry I bothered you, but I gotta deliver this stuff to Mr. Benny. He called up the market and said something went wrong with his oven, and he told me to hurry over with four cans of hash. Hash? Come on. Benita, did you hear that? Hash. If Benny thinks I'm going to put on a tuxedo to eat hash with a bunch of convicts, he's got another thing coming. Ronnie, now, don't, don't, don't get so excited. We promised Jack we'd be there, and we've got to go. Now, oh. come on. All right, come on, let's go. Anita, from now on, invitation or no invitation, I swear this is the last time. Ronnie, I look out! Oh! Ouch. Ronnie! Oh. Darling, did you hurt yourself? My. Ah. Why did the gardener leave the. Oh, that flower pot in the middle of. Anita. Ah. Anita. Oh, 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 oh. Ronnie, what's the matter? <laughs> Ronnie! What are you laughing at? Benita, we don't have to go. I broke my leg. <laughs> oh, six glorious weeks in the hospital. Six weeks away from Benny. <laughs> Darling, put me in a maternity ward. You'll never look for me there. <laughs> Jack will be back in just a moment. But first... At 62, American. An impartial survey covering all the southern tobacco markets reveals this important fact. More independent tobacco experts smoke Lucky Strike regularly than the next two leading brands combined. Yes, Lucky Strike. First again with Tobacco Man. Remember, these are the experts, the independent auctioneers, buyers, and warehousemen. Year after year, they can see the makers of Lucky Strike consistently select and buy that fine, that light, that naturally mild tobacco. And more of these experts smoke Lucky Strike regularly than the next two leading brands combined. You've heard the survey results. Now, here's what Mr. Frank A. Brown, veteran tobacco warehouseman from Stoneville, North Carolina, recently said. Season after season, I've seen the makers of Lucky Strike buy fine, ripe tobacco. Tobacco you just can't beat for smoking quality. I've smoked Lucky's 29 years. A Lucky Strike smoker for 29 years. And Mr. Brown, like you, looks to the cigarette he smokes for enjoyment. Real deep down smoking enjoyment. So light up a Lucky yourself, and puff by puff, you'll see. L-S-M-F-T. L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco, and naturally, fine tobacco means a really enjoyable smoke for you. Yes, puff by puff, pack by pack. You'll like Lucky Strike. So next time you buy cigarettes, ask for Lucky Strike. Good night, folks. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.